Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi, Menachis Daf Nun Hey. We begin at the Tanur Abonon, which is eight lines from the top of the Yom. Tanur Abonon. So we have 100 figs. We have them dried, gray gray. So figs come in two forms, fresh, which are called te'enim, nice and uh, plump and pleasant looking, but not so durable. Then we have gray gray, which are the dried, pressed, you know, dehydrated figs which are perhaps less pleasant looking than the fresh, plump ones, but they're more longer lasting, right? They're durable. They have a longer shelf life. So now if we have figs here and we're trying to do truma, we have a hundred figs. So one may actually use the te'enim, the fresh ones, as truma, apply them as truma, that's the part that's given to the coin, on the dried ones. So you have 90 dried figs, which require, let's say, whatever the numbers are, okay, so you have a certain amount of dried figs, and you can use the to any of the, the, the fresh ones as truma on the dried ones. So let's say you'll do the 2% system as we learned yesterday, so you'll have a 98 dried, and you set aside two fresh ones as the truma. But that's only with Mokim Shurigilan Lasa's Te'enim Gregoris. That's only in a place where they're, they're, they're accustomed. There are people, or he himself, will go ahead and do the um, conversion. He'll dry the Te'enim and turn them into Gregory's, giving them that longer shelf life, as we're going to see later in the Gemara. We're speaking that there's no kind in the vicinity um, whom you can give it to right away in its fresh state. So by the time the kind rolls around, it's going to be wormy and, you know, um, spoiled. So only in a place where actually you're going to convert these into dried and give them a longer shelf life. In this case, it's allowed. You're allowed to use te'enim in the interim, pending the uh, drying process. Now Rashi points out that you're going to use the minion formula, the numbers uh, system. So basically, you're going to have uh, 98 dried and two fresh, which uh, covers you in all cases, because the two fresh are actually bigger, they're plumper. So in any case, if you use the minion system, you're safe. Okay, that's the way to do it. This was uh, connected to yesterday's discussion, I'm not going to get into it right now, but the point is, two fresh for 98 dried. Again, where they will actually transform the uh, fresh teinim into gregors. But, v'loi gregors al teinim. What about the other way around? You have a basket of fresh figs, and you want to use Gregory's dried ones as truma on the fresh. That you cannot do. And the Gemara later will tell us the reason is because, uh, in this case, there was a kain in the village. So in that case, when there's a kain in close proximity, you meant to give him fresh fruit. Termin min hayafe. High quality, pleasant looking, fresh fruit. So in this case, you cannot even in a place where they typically do process the uh, fresh into dried. And what's the point of adding this? So Rashi says, um, well, we don't say that, uh, you know, look, ultimately the Kayin is also going to uh, process the, uh, the figs and turn them into dried, so may as well give them the dried. We don't say that. Rashi says, Zilba Sahash, they look at the current form right now, it's um, nice and fresh, you can't give him the shrunken, dehydrated one. Okay. So we have two parts in the price, right? Part number one says, use the te'enim in a place where there's no issue of longevity because you're going to convert them into Gregor's. Second part of the price says, do not use dried ones. So how do we reconcile both parts of the price? Amamar. Let's uh, take a step back and review the halacha again. First we say term into Ainim al Gregus, use the fresh ones, but Mokam Shurgin lost the of Gregus in the place where they transform it into dried. So that's the only reason why you can do it, because ultimately it's gonna be dried and be durable. But Mokam Shurgilin in only in a place where they're accustomed to transforming it, yes. But Mokam Shainrigin Lay, but otherwise you can't do that. You can't use Ta'inim. Why not? Hey Khidami, what exactly is going on? Idika Kain is a kain nearby. Fresh is better. Mokam Shainai Ruggle. 
So just because they don't process the uh, fresh into dried, I'm like, why can't you give it to him? At time we have a mission. If there's a kind nearby, it's the opposite. Give him the fresh one. Tell him Give him the pleasant, higher quality produce. El Abshit like a kind. Oh, apparently there's no kind in the area. And therefore the, uh, the Brysa instructs us to use dried or fresh, which are going to be turned into dried. So that you can hold on to it until the kain comes around and you'll have what to give him. Okay, so the first part of the Brysa is speaking, there's no kain in the area. In safe, let's proceed to the second part of the Brysa, which seems to contradict it. It says, don't use the dried, dehydrated, v'loi gregoris al-te'in, al-te'in, v'afilu mokim shu rogel la sustain of gregoris, right? That was the second part of the price. Do not use gregoris in all cases. Why not? There's no kayin. That actually is the preferred method. We'd like a kayin in my life. I don't have a mish. The mokim shayin kayin. There's no kayin in the area. Better that you use terim and amaskayim. Do truma. Using material which uh, has longevity, which is more durable. El apshit adik a kayin. Apparently, in the second case of the price, there is a coin nearby. Therefore, fresh is required. So, you mean Reisha, the first part of the price, uh, is talking to Lekha coin. There's no coin in the area. And say for the second part of the price, don't want there is a coin, take a coin. Which is a bit you know, unusual. The same price should be addressing two different variables. And yeah, apparently, that's the case. Reisha, the first part is the Lekha coin. There's no coin. Therefore, use items with longer shelf lives. Say for the second part of the uh, which requires fresh to be given, the kind of the in the area. So that's the way to go. Amrak Papa concludes Rak Papa Shmamina. We learn from this um, discussion, Dachkinan, Umakminan, Masnis, and Betray Tani. We prefer. Packaging the, the, the Brysa in this manner, which is a bit, you know, unusual. It's sort of a Dachak. We're sort of forcing the Brysa to be learned this way, betray timey, as though it's addressing two different variables, two different circumstances, which is unusual. But that's the way to go. That's the preferred method rather than making it a machlekes. Rather than concluding that the Brysa is reflective of two opposing shites, betray tanoi, two tanoi, Rashi brings. The other alternative, the other way to learn the Brysa would be that. Um, it's all speaking that there is there is no kain in the area, and the um, top of the price says, "Give him the uh, the dried stuff that uh, that works." But the second part of the price, which says uh, you can only give him fre- you can only do truman fresh because that's going like a different shita, which is discussed um, in Masechas um, Trumis, I believe, that in fact holds that in all cases you meant to be mafresh. Yeah, Tesis brings him. Sechas Trumas, Perikshani, Mishnah Dalad. Lo'elam Torah min ayaf. In all cases, all situations, you meant to do the Trumas from the best, irrespective of whether there's a coin here. So even if it ends up rotting on you, but your act of Trumas, your hafrasha should be on the best. Okay, continues the Mishnah. Kol ha-manachos, ni loishas b'paishven. How do you mix the flour? How do you knead the mincha flour with uh, lukewarm water? And Mepharshim explain, uh, not too hot, because that will... Um, cook it <laughs> and not uh, cold either because that wouldn't really facilitate a proper uh, you know um, um, cohesive dough rather they use pastry which is lukewarm material but lukewarm can facilitate chimuts can sort of cause it to rise um, quicker than, than cold and therefore um, you have to ensure that the mincha material does not become chametz because otherwise it's an issue if even the leftovers, so the, certainly the, the kaimetz itself can't be chametz, but even the leftovers, after the kmitzu was done, right, then the leftovers meant for the kaimetz become chametz, there's a lot. You not meant to do so, shenemar. So we have the pasach here actually, which is going on the minchet, on the uh, part that goes on the mezbeach first, and then the gemara. We will add the next pasuk that refers to the Shuraim as well. Shenamar kol mincha shatakriv Hashem. The part of the mincha was goes to the base to the mizbeach loy say asa chametz. Right? Cannot be processed as chametz. There's a lot. And the Mishnah concludes 
v'chayv al yishasa, v'al arichasa, v'al afiyasa. Suppose the material does become chametz, he is chayv when he does alisha, when he needs it. He's chayv also when he forms the breads. V'al afiyasa, a third violation would be when he actually bakes it. So each one is a separate independent violation. Menon Amelia says, the Gemara, how do we know that this Isra of chametz applies even to the Shiraim? I'm Rosh Lakish, I'm the Pasuk says, lo yisiyafa chametz chelkam. Even their portion that goes to the Kayhan, Mafil Chalkam, that too should not be allowed to become Chametz, Lo Siyafa Chametz, cannot be baked as Chametz. Ask the Gemara, Vahai Lachidu Asa. So this Pasuk, the second Pasuk, is warning against turning the Chelik of the Kayhanim into Chametz. Is that the uh, meaning of the Pasuk? I mean, Boy, look, the Sani has needed for a different Allah. Says the Gemara Ahmed Beis, Lo Siyafa Chametz, Matamalim, what's the point? What's the message in this second pasuk? It already says earlier. It says earlier. That was the pasuk we had in the Mishnah, right? So why the second pasuk? Says the Bryce. I'll tell you why. In the first pasuk, it says, "Don't process it as chametz." So perhaps it's only a single violation for the entire process from beginning to end, from when you need it all the way to the baking. It's just one transgression. Liochel, perhaps I would think based on that pasuk, that's a single violation. Lo yechayev alachas al kulim is perhaps only liable one liability for the entire process, for the kneading, for the forming, for the baking. Tamalayim comes to the second pasuk and singles out baking. Lo yisiyaf. What's the point of singling it out? To teach us that each step in the process carries its own liability. Afi b'chal hoisa, because really the baking was included in that general directive of don't process it chametz. Let's say asa chametz. Lama yad says, why did, why was it singled out? Why was it separated from the process and singled out as it's for itself? La hakish elio, in order to connect to it as follows. Ma afia, just as afia baking miuchedes, is um, separate, is unique. Shimasi yichidi. In a sense that it's a, it's an important step in the process. Rashi says, "Masa Khoshov. right? It's a separate, uh, unique step in the process. and and as per the pasuk, one is liable for baking. So baking itself carries its own liability. Afani avili shasa v'rechasa v'chol masi yichidi shaba. Likewise, any important step in the process, lisha, aricha, and any other. Important step. What is that going to include? Lasuya kituf. Rashi says kituf means a um, smooth the uh, surface of the of the breads with water, smooth it out. That's also a separate special step in the process. Shumas yichidi. And if you're doing it with chametz, the chayav and alav you chayav separately for each individual act. So bottom line is that the second pasuk isn't extra at all. Like say, Alpha Chametz is teaching us that each step in the process carries its own reliability. Otherwise, you would think it's just one Isra for everything. So now we don't have a Pasuk that forbids us to turn the Shiraim into Chametz. Says the Gemara, well, hold it, there's, a, there's an extra word in that Pasuk. Anan, we were coming from the word Mechalkam coming, and we were based on the word Mechalkam. It says, Let's say, Alpha Chametz, Chalkam. You're right, the first part, Let's say, Alpha Chametz. Is teaching that each act is chayev, but the word chalkam covers the leftovers. And that's our source. So perhaps that's the, you know, the whole purpose of this pasuk, just to cover the leftovers. If you bake the leftovers, uh, then you're chayev. But who's to say that each individual act, lisha, aricha, right, each one has its own separate liability. Who says we can use the same pasuk for two purposes? Says the Gemara, we could. Im Kain, because if it's only to warn against turning the Shiraim into Chametz, Im Kain, Lichtav Chalkam, Lechsev Chametz, the pasuk would word itself differently. It would say, their portion do not make Chametz. My, why does it word it differently? Lechsev Chametz, don't bake it as Chametz, and then it adds Chalkam. Apparently, there were two different references here. Shamas Menotak, that allows us to learn, learn both halachas from this Pasuk. Let's say, Afa Chametz is a general instruct, detailing that each step in the process carries its own chiv. The word Chalkam afterwards includes the Shirayim as well. Says the Gemara. But, but you still, you know, 
you're applying this individuality to all steps in the process. Each one has its own chiv. Who says? The Pasuk speaks only about uh, afia, baking. Vema, perhaps we can suggest. Afia, the part barachman, alachayev chada. Yeah. Baking, which the Torah pointed out separately, carries its own separate liability. But inach, the other steps, perhaps are lumped together. Alachayev chada, kula, perhaps only chayev one for all of them. Who's to say that Rafia sort of sets a precedent that each individual step in the process is chayef separately. Maybe only Rafia has that uniqueness. It's sort of the final step in the process or whatever the reason would be. But otherwise, everything else until then is only chayef one. Well, that's a general uh, formula that we uh, always apply to these types of things. When the Torah um, singles something out, which had been included initially, and sort of separates and singles it out, that's coming to reflect on the entire package. Mishum da'ava dava shayi b'chlal. Afia, baking, was really included in that first pasuk loy se asa, which covered the entire process. So it was included, anonymously, included in, in the general process. We also nachlal, and Torah sort of singled it out, identified it separately, right? Loy se'af acham, it's lame, it's coming to teach. Loy lame al atzma yatsa, it wasn't just coming to teach about itself, and how unique he is. El lame al kalkula yatsa, was coming to reflect on the entire package. That each individual step, each stage, Carries its own chiv. Hold it, says who says? Vema, perhaps we can suggest that it's not so. Because Laisi Asa, which is a general Isra, making it chametz, is a cloud, a general um, sort of instruct covering the entire process without itemizing the individual steps. And then the Pasuk Laisi Asa is a prat, is an individual reference to an individual step. So perhaps Klalo Prat, we should apply the rule of Klalo Prat when a general. References followed by a specific reference. We say, "Ein b'chal el mashu eprat." Actually, it's come to explain the chalal. Loisi asa chal, loisi asa chal, loisi asa chametz is limited to baking. Only baking has the iser. Afiyu in only baking carries that iser. Mi dachnir but any other process doesn't. Amar Rabbi Pturiki, you know why you can't uh, apply the chalal eprat system here? From the havi chalal eprat am ruchakin zemizeh because the pasuk of loisi asa chametz, which is a chalal. And the pasuk of 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 loisa afa chametz chalkam, which is the uh, your prat, are two different parshas, right? You have loisa asa and parshas vayikra. Loisa afa is is in saf. I'm rechalkin zem mizem. We call klal of prat. I'm rechalkin zem mizem. Whenever we have this type of klal and prat, which are at a distance of each other, ain't done oisa b'chal prat. You can't combine them as a klal of prat system. So there goes that suggestion. Masiv Rav Adabar Ava. So he asked, some say Kedi. It was somebody whose name we don't know. So basically it was a question asked in the base Medrash. Really? When the Klalo Prat are far from each other, we can't combine them into a formula. We don't apply them as the Klalo Prat. Listen to this Brisa, which seems to say otherwise. The Pasuk is referring to the Chatas that is of his Soir. That he not say that a king would bring upon sinning. Shachat oisa yishachat weir v'makem ashish ishchat es oilav ne Hashem. Chatasu you do the shchita in the same location as you do the oila. Where is that? Heichan oila neshchat. Where do you do the oila? But zafin to the north of the Azar. Avzar but zafin likewise the soir of the nasi is shechted in the zafin. Why do we need a pasuk to teach us this point? We already know that every chantas is in zafin. Mechi anu mikan lemedim. Do we have to learn from here that a so you have a nasi, you slaughter in the tzafin. Well, the Quran we have another pasuk. We make a mashat shachat, a elot shachat, a chatz. Every chatz is shachted in the same location as the elot. So why the added pasuk by the soyer? Well, Maza Yotza, what's the point of singling out the soyer in a separate pasuk? The kaivai to establish that it's critical. Shem lo shachat oisay betzafin pesala. If you didn't do it in the tzafin, it's critical. Not only are you meant to do it, but it's essential. Okay, ato emel kach yotza. You're suggesting that the extra pasuk is to tell you. This point. Perhaps just the opposite. The Pasuk is saying, look, the Tzafin requirement is specific to the Sawyer of the Nasi. It doesn't apply to other, other Chatois. So it's coming actually to minimize and to shrink the requirements. No, we have a third Pasuk. Every Chatos is done in the place of the Ayla. Okay, so this is a, a general rule for all chatas. Ze bona av l kol chatois turn So this third pasik 
So actually, this is a pasuk of a private chatas. But again, what's the point of, you know, repeating this point that the chatas is the same place as the oil had to tell you? It's a general rule. Zebana, this is sort of a father precedent. L'chol chatoyitz, shetunah sof, and every chatas needs sof. Okay, so that's the price. Question is, why this third pasuk? Time of the chatzar rachman of a is a chatas. So apparently it's only because of this third chatas, which is third pasuk, which came to the rescue, that we know, we now know that every chatas needs suffering. Hold on, okay, without this pasuk, I mean, I would, I would have concluded otherwise. I would say that only by the sawyer of the Nasi, Shazotun Tzofen, only that one needs suffering. Veinachatun Tzofen, other chatas that need suffering. If not for the third pasuk, which spreads it around. Why would I say so? Why would I limit the suffering to the sawyer of the Nasi? My time will have mission to have a klal prat. Apparently because of the klal prat system. Because, let's just recap, we have three psukim. We have the prat, which is, which is the soyer nasi, v'shachat oisoy, v'moka mashi'i shachat oisoyla. But we have the other pasuk, v'moka mashi'i t'shachat oisoyla, t'shachat achatas. Which is a klal. A chatas is done with the, the same place as the oil. That's a klal. So this alone wouldn't allow us to spread it around to other carbonates, because that's a klal of prat. General and specific. The, the specific explains general. Is that what? That it only applies to the specific chat, the chat of the of the sire. That's what I would say. If not for that third pasa, which spreads it around. But let's just suffice with the first two psukim. Apparently, it's a klal prat. That will limit it. Even though they're stated far from each other, not in the same discussion. The shachat of the sire is in vayikra and shachat achatas. That's in, in Tzav. So what do we see? You see, even though they're not next to each other, you can still apply Klal Prat, which is in contrast to what we said before. Maskler Ravashi says, Ravashi, hold it. How can you even suggest a Klal Prat in this case? High Klal Pratu? Does this uh, qualify as a Klal Prat? Which requires the Prat to be stated after the Klal, to explain the Klal. Here's just the opposite. Here... The specific is stated before the general. The specific, which is the Shachat Oise of the Soyer Nasi, is in Vayikra, before the next Pasuk, which is in Tzav. Prat Uklalu. If anything, it's a Prat which then leads into a Klal. Vanasa Klal Moise Vala Prat. If anything, it leads you in the opposite direction. It's a, we start with the specific, then we move on to general. So if anything, it expands it. The klal is now adding. Moisev, it expands the prat, that it applies to all carbon chattas. Now you know that tzafen is a required element in every chattas. So let's just stop there. Why do we even need that third pasuk to spread it around? Elo. So you must say, Tana, the Tana, the price of Oisei Kukashile. The reason why we require the third pasuk to spread it around to other chatas is because by the pasuk of the sir it says v'shachat oisei. Only this one is suffering. That's an exclusionary term. Oisei kashle v'chakam and the brayse meant to ask oyei neil shazeon toon suffering because of oisei. Perhaps it's limiting the suffer to the sir nasi vein acher versus another carb chatas that would not need toon suffering to kasher chmona oisei. So it's only because of that. That we encountered this difficulty, and that necessitated the third pasuk that applies to all kabbonis chatas equally. Okay, says the Gemara. Okay, but now at the end of the day, we know that it's spread around. Now that we know from the third pasuk that every chatas needs tzafin, let's go back a second. So why oisai? What is oisai teaching us? Oisai is a limiting term, but if it's not limited, what's the point of oisai? What's that coming to exclude? To tell you one exclusion. That this, this regular chatas needs suffering, but so she says this is the uh, goats that the Nisim, the leaders would bring when they inaugurated the Mishkan and the Chanukah um, Samasbech and the Mishkan. So even though it was technically a chatas, but it wasn't to atone for a sin, so it didn't have the halach of suffering. And that's the exclusion here. Perhaps I would say it does need suffering because Hoyle is Shrabbalin in Smicha since those Chatois needed Smicha like any Chatas. The Shrabbin Amelin in Suffering, perhaps they're included in Suffering as well. Kamal Shmulan comes the word Oitsoi and pushes them out from Suffering. How do we know that they need Smicha? What's your starting point? The starting, we have a price for that. 
So there's an extra expression there. Put the hands, do the smich, on the head of the soyer. Rashi says, I could have left out the word soyer. I could have said al roishay. So the soyer is coming to include another carbon for the smicha requirement. The rabbis to include soyer nachshon and smicha. Even the soyer of the nasi needs smicha. By the way, the reason why we refer to it as nachshon because he was the first one. Okay. So the rabbis soyer nachshon and smicha. The rabbi the kunder biyuda. This pasuk teaches that even the soyer of the nachshon needed smicha. So perhaps since it needs smicha, perhaps we should need soften as well because like a regular chatos comes the pasuk oisa and excludes it. Okay, that's going to be the point. Anyway, let's continue with the price. Rabbi Shimon Oimel, the rabbis. The Pasuk actually is including smicha for something else, the uh, goat that the uh, tzibur brings that they send with Abay Dezorah. Okay. Maskal Ravina says, Ravina, hold it. Your uh, answer certainly works according to Rabbi So Nachshon needs smicha, perhaps tzafen as well, comes Oisai and rules out the tzafen. Maskal Ravina, Tenech Rabbida, Rabbida, your system works. But according to Rabbi Shimon, there's no smicha by Sar Nachshon, so we see it's not similar to regular chatz, why would I even think it needs tzafen? Which in sets states that pasuk to rule it to rule it out. The Rav Shimon Michael Emeima, Amalei Mazutar by the Rav Mar the Ravina. So contribute you good. The Rav Yudah Nami contribute as well. You can ask. Well, why would I think it needs suffering? My dear is Rabbi is Rabbi with respect to smicha which was included, was applied because of the special pasuk we just had. This Rabbi, so yeah. So that got added to the Sar Nachshon. But why would I think Tzafayin would be uh, applied there as well? My delay is Rabbi, delay is Rabbi. Something which we don't have an indication that the uh, Sar Nachshon should be you know, included in, like, for instance, Tzafayin. Then who says to add that? But perhaps I would say, Eloi Matikra, if not for the Prasak Oisei, which rules out Tzafayin by Sar Nachshon, I mean, I would say, on my own, I would just compare it to every other Chatas which needs Tzafayin, right? Well then, if you're comparing already, then why, we, why do we need that pasuk for smicha? Just compare it to every other chatas which needs smicha. Smicha gufa. So even regarding smicha itself, lish the pasuk doesn't have to speak about smicha and apply that to the certain action of tesi I'll just make a, my own original comparison. I'll say, well, uh, a certain action is called a chatas and give it smicha. Apparently, you can't use that system. You can't take that route. Elisha midaris lealfino. You can't use. A compa- you can't make a, a, a comparison. You can't connect a one-time event, carbon like a sar nachshon, from a generational, um, um, you know, standard regular carbon. Meaning, you can't compare sar nachshon to regular chantas, like regarding smicha. So once you agree that regarding smicha, you wouldn't be able to just derive one from the other. Chanami, likewise regarding. The Tzafen requirement. Why would I need a Pasuk to exclude him? Why would I even think that he's included in Tzafen? He's a different type of karma, Hanami. Here as well, regarding the Tzafen requirement. Shrita, but Tzafen, Shah, Sarnachshan, which is a one-time type of carbon. Midaris, Le'afina, we don't compare, we don't can't derive from other regular standard, you know, carbon chatas. So pretty much back in the, at the question. The question mark. We had the extra word, Oisai. Only this needs Tzafen and something else doesn't. What's that something else? To exclude certain Nachshon? Why would he need Tzafen to begin with? He's not a regular Chathos. Okay, so tomorrow we'll pick it up from here. Ella, Oisai. We're going to look for other ways to understand the word Oisai. What's it coming to exclude? What's it coming to teach us? Okay, so in a nutshell, we learned about Truma. Sometimes it's done. Fresh material, sometimes on durable material, depending on the presence of the coin. Uh, a mincha may not be turned into chametz, whether the actual mincha or the shirayim. We have a special love for the shirayim as well, and we have a special love for each step in the process. And then we went on discussion regarding klaloprat, regarding the uh, din of chatas but tzafain. Pretty much every chatas is in tzafain, um, except for one, so in action. All the best to you and that's Lachar Rab.